Hi, and welcome to today's webinar. So today we're going to focus on DXP22 LTS. Uh, that is our long-term support solution. We're going to look into the tech side of it. And I'm going to show you some really cool stuff, right, Martin? All the new goodies with uh, the UEFI 118 and the new Horizon theme and all the things we've added to both the Open Edition and the SAP Edition. Absolutely. So let's start with our key takeaways. Uh, and this is a beautiful uh, release, right? So we have uh, amazingly good-looking cockpit. Uh, the apps look awesome. Uh, all of the applications from previous versions of Neptune once running on this version will be automatically being able to be converted yeah. to the latest version uh, of, of UI5 and of the, of the theme. You can still run it on the older versions if you want to as well. So up to you. But this, this new uh, 1108 uh, version from UI5 really pushed us in a direction that we had to look at the cockpit, we had to look at the app designer, and then of course also at the launch pad and applications as well. So um, today you're going to see what we've done with the cockpit and the app designer and also what we can do with both dark and light mode and the, the launch pad. So it's really, really, really amazing. So uh, what are the main uh, key takeaways from this, uh, from the technical perspective? Uh, you're going to have custom components. Uh, we're going to have event-driven architecture, marketplace, better UI, super app, personalization or launchpad. Let's start with, with the custom components, what that means. So custom components are a um, ability for application building box to be inherited fundamentally, meaning that you can uh, create as complex components as you want and you can add it as fragments to different applications and when you make the life cycle of that fragment automatically propagates to everything. So never been easier for uh, creating uh, big apps with and maintain it at a low risk and a low effort. And of course these uh, components are reusable so you can reuse them in multiple locations. Exactly and the ability is that if you change it it will automatically be propagated and then we'll show you an example of that. Uh, then we're going to talk about event-driven architecture. What is this? Uh, and fundamentally, this is a functionality that allows you to, uh, by listening and propagating events from system to system, uh, from application front end to back end, you can trigger workflows, can trigger API calls, and it can trigger also server side scripts. So all in which uh, allows you to um, subscribe and uh, submit events that can be, be interpreted uh, as uh, end systems and uh, as well as end users alike. Um, marketplace, the marketplace is an evolution of our store that we had on previous versions. So the difference between the store and the marketplace is that it is co-located on both ACP edition, open edition, the same thing. Not just the same thing. It actually takes the view from the uh, Neptune portal and runs that locally on each planet. Exactly. So we'll be able to actually give you more content and more functionalities on it without you having to necessarily have a new version or a new patch of uh, DXP22. Uh, this is also backwards compatible to DXP21, uh, meaning that also this will be your way of deploying um, applications from the app builder, which is the no code part on the DXP portal over to your runtimes for ACP edition, open edition in a super simple way within governance, really nice and simple, really a nice flow. Um, uh, among other things, you're gonna have partner solutions embedded in there. You're gonna have building blocks, ACP templates. You're gonna have uh, code snippets as well. And you can have a public side and a private side. And we're gonna cover that in a, in a little bit more in detail. Also, we already mentioned the latest version of UI5, 1108, LTS, uh, both ACP UI5 and Open UI5 directly embedded into the uh, runtime. So what can this do in terms of better look and feel, consumer grade UI? So we changed again that on the cockpit, we changed as well on the launch pad. And speaking of the launch pad, the super app, the launch pad is no longer just a launch pad, it's a super app. You can bring your own app into it. You can completely, as an end user, personalize your launchpad, making it super nice and simple for the end user to create what matters to them within, within the governance uh, as well. So everything's still role-based uh, authorizations, but each end user can on their mobile device or on the launchpad uh, on the desktop make the changes that they want. Right, Martin? Correct. 
very well. So let's start with custom components and what do they bring? They bring more reusability. Every time we speak with customers and, uh, and we do that often, uh, or one of the main targets they have is to be able to do many things at, at, at the same time, meaning that they can, so having the app as a end result of multiple mini apps, let's call it like that. We can do the app cache load, of course, mm -hmm. already. Uh, and I'll show you here an example. You create a custom component. This custom component can be as complex as as simple as you want. It can be, it can have an API call, can have its own uh, data provider class. And with this, you can define what is the interface of this custom component. And when you are going to use it, is that on the app designer, on the low code, you're going to have a drag and drop component. That is that custom component. And when you drag it in place, you are fetching dynamically whatever interface it is. So on the side, right hand side where you have typically the properties of the UI5 components, you're going to have the interface of that custom component. So whatever you can bind in there, subscribe to events that are being propagated from it, you automatically are abstracting the complexity that that custom yeah, it's component It's a subset has. of the... Of, if you take the custom component and you have all the different components in it, your five objects, then we take, uh, you take, the one who creates the component, mm -hmm. take wh whichever of these attributes that are essential for the application and add that as an, uh, as an attribute to that component. Yeah, and for example, uh, let's look at a typical case here where you have an app where you have a header and a footer. Let's say that you want this header to be the same header in n number of applications. Let's use the example here, application A, application B, they have different, different uh, bodies, they have different payloads, but they require to have the same header. So rather than you having to do uh, kind of copying the header from one app to the other one, you use you create a custom component where you embed functionality, uh, with the logo, for example, fetching, and everything is done in there. And when you apply this same header to uh, application A, B, C, you're going to have the same exact header. But let's say that you want to have the functionality to every app you have that have that header. If you change it, if you add, let's say, export to Excel functionality on that, on that header, automatically all apps that are using it will inherit it. And they will do it in a fully automated way making it possible for you to break your application into fragments where you can have developer one doing the header, developer two doing the business logic, developer three doing the API calls, and developer four doing the footer. So you can have an app broken into multiple parts, but these parts can also be used in multiple apps, making it so easy for you to uh, enhance the experience of building blocks with not just UI, but using something that is reusable, scalable, and inherited, right? Okay. So these custom components are actually being used inside the Open Edition, uh, inside the cockpit. So every time you see a dialog everywhere on the cockpit, we are actually using now a custom component within the product itself, so that you always have the same dialog, the same pop-up with the same functionalities, but just with a different content, and of course, with a different connection to the data. But that's kind of why the custom component is, is so used that we actually are using it inside our platform as well. And now moving on to the event-driven architecture, hands-off interactions, what do they, that mean? So this is available on the open edition by the utilization of a third-party uh, software called Redis. So it's, uh, you can couple in a Redis server directly with the Neptune DXP open edition. In the Nep Neptune DXP cloud, this is just a checkbox you put there and we'll automatically provision a ready server uh, connected directly to the open edition. So you don't need to any kind of doing any kind of setup. And what can you trigger with this events? You can trigger jobs, you can trigger uh, workflows and you can trigger uh, service scripts. Uh, and you can trigger this uh, from basically anywhere from the front end. You have now on the app designer a uh, drag and drop component that is subscribe to event or publish event. And whatever that event is hooked on to, it can be to a different app. It can be to a different system. It can come from a different system and trigger something on the app. For instance, the SAP system. So yeah. you could use app channels to trigger all these events in the open edition. So 
That's the way to get all your stuff out of this edition and out to the world. Your exactly. Edition. Getting the two things connected is, is really the key. And um, as an example, you can have also multiple open edition environments connecting to each other, events between each other using this Redis uh, server setup. Uh, so that you can trigger events that are on a different open edition environment, really making everything work together. But we really wanted to show you something that is that is real, that is simple, and that it's very objective. So let me show you here an example of a restaurant queue management. So you're going to have on the left hand side uh, 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 the client side application, and on the right hand side the uh, manager restaurant manager application so and you can think of this as many scenarios production scenario notification scenario from from a maintenance perspective so basically hands-off interactions means that you don't need to sync it's not asynchronous everything is synchronous right so let's see the, the example how to make it on the left hand side you have the uh, queue uh, me as a customer of the restaurant get in, put on my name, saying uh, that I'm on the queue, having some some comments if I want to, my details, and this is just an example. So as I click on start, automatically on the right hand side you can see the queue from the actual manager of the restaurant. So the, the restaurant can immediately see, the restaurant manager can see that there is a person waiting as he moves the customers to a in processing queue, automatically the customers, as you can see on the left hand side, are automatically updated. You can see how long was that. And as you move the customers from in processing to completed their meal, the customer that has put on the request gets a request for uh, the order has been completed, can give feedback, and automatically that updates. So that's how easy uh, event driven architecture can be. Just two, three components that you drag and drop into your app and you can subscribe and publish to. You have code snippets as well on the server scripts. So very easy to, to use basically everywhere. Next step, build and buy solutions. So every, every single customer of ours say, okay, should I build this? Can I buy it? So we wanted to bring that uh, to uh, life and means that also the marketplace is now open for business. Ooh. Inside the uh, Neptune DXP, both ACP edition, open edition, and on the DXP portal, we have this available. Uh, we'll tell you in a little bit what can you find there, what is the purpose of the marketplace, but also a very cool uh, technical side, right? Mark? Yeah, this, this project started out about half a year ago where this man here and his team and the uh, GM team said, we have this marketplace in the portal. We want to showcase that in the open edition cockpit and in the SAP edition cockpit. How can you do that? And they started working on an iframe like 20 years ago and said, Haha, why not uh, use the app cache load and serve the application as a JS view? You know, instead of having HTML, you just have a JavaScript file that's a JS view, the way we load everything in the cockpit and in the launchpad. So the DXP portal is now serving a JS view that's consumed inside the SAP edition and in the open edition. And in the cockpit, in each of these cockpits, we have uh, functions that's like a subclass of a, of a class that the view from the portal calls. And it doesn't care about how this is implemented. How do you actually install an application from this marketplace application inside your SAP edition or open edition? The marketplace doesn't care about it. It just calls the function to say the user has clicked this button. And then each planet, each platform will then take that call and actually perform the the process in the backend. And this project also triggered uh, the cockpit. What is it doing? It's actually doing exactly the same as the launchpad is doing. It's calling using app cache load to, it didn't use app cache load. It's calling a get view function going back to the server and fetching the view and then showing the view in the cockpit. But the launchpad had a lot of better options to actually cache the view in the front end. Mm -hmm. The cockpit didn't cache views before, but now we're using app cache loads inside the cockpit as well. So if you go into your uh, debugger and see in your in your index the B and see all the views, you'll actually also now see cockpit views being stored on the front end. Much faster loading. It will load maybe 10 times faster as before after the first initial loading. So mm -hmm. we are eating our own dog food and using these internal projects to actually improve the product all over. Exactly. So Content-wise on the marketplace, what can you find here? You can find solutions, 
uh, from uh, free and premium complete solutions from partners and from Neptune. You can find SAP templates, you can find code snippets, you can find application building blocks, and you can find app builder applications. So, what? What's that? Yeah, that's super cool. So if you see here, the app builder is hosted on the DXP portal. It's no code, you can build UI5 apps, but you can fill UI5 apps in a completely agnostic you said, way. You said no code? It's no code, literally no code. So you don't need to be a developer to build the front end of an app. Uh, you can have a mock-up data there where you can even import your own Excel if you want to uh, and use it as a, as a data source. You can do all the binding. Uh, and for example, let's say that you want to consume this inside the SAP edition. Can I do it? Yes, you can. Of course. Uh, but how does it get there? So we have this uh, very interesting video that, that one of our colleagues did on, on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you can find it there explaining the end-to-end -end functionality of it. But in, in short, is that all of the apps that you are building the front end on the um, app builder, you are able to export them through the marketplace into the SAP edition and to open edition. The same single application. What can you build there? There is like 290 uh, building blocks, templates, and we'll cover that in a little bit on, on the better UI part. But fundamentally, when you are on the app builder with your business key users and you say publish to the marketplace, you can publish privately or can publish publicly. Privately, only on the runtime when you go to the marketplace and you say log on to the log into the DXP uh, portal, you are then connecting your account, your user with your account on the DXP portal to your marketplace that is on your runtime. So you're able to see not only your private uh, published apps from the app builder, but you can see anything in there. So you can publish entire solutions on the open edition using a GitHub repository with uh, all of the table content, uh, tables, uh, server scripts, uh, workflows, front-end, back-end logic, everything into a, a GitHub repository from Neptune. You can clone it locally. You can do whatever you want, use whatever tool you want. You can do DevOps on it as well. But when you click publish to the marketplace, you can publish privately so that all systems that are able to consume those resources in the marketplace and they are connected to your account by, by the end user logging into the DXP portal, you can just click install. It's going to be so cool to see what our customers, whatever you are going to build and publish on the store. So on the marketplace, that's going yeah. to be nice to see. Exactly. Uh, speaking of uh, UI, we've been talking about how this UI5 has really uh, changed uh, how everything looks like. Right, Martin? Mm -hmm. So um, the part of it is, as I said uh, just earlier before on this webinar, top quality UI, what that, that means. In terms of UI5, uh, you said that we really changed the way that the launchpad lo looks like, the cockpit looks like, uh, but also we are bringing in better development tools into the cockpit. Right, so both on ACP edition, open edition, we are using the aggregations of the UI5 so that when you drag and drop a component from the list of components into your applications or in between your application, it will show you red or green, depending if the aggregations will let you put it there. What that simply means is that you cannot break your app. Hmm. You can turn it off as well. Yeah, much better to uh, when you placing a header or a footer in a, in, a, in a page, you will see where it can go. And yeah. What can this page and what can this footer actually accept as a, an aggregation? So. And, and that's a lot less risk for the developers that are new to UI5, for example. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you where you can put components and that automatically will show you. But in terms of what does uh, UI5 uh, give you as well is that it gives you uh, horizon themes with light and dark, uh, 1, 108 LTS version. This gives you WCAG 2.1 A and AA level compliance. So accessibility features, all area tags are available on the properties of the components. We would recommend you to look at the documentation that SAP makes available. We'll share the links 
as well and uh, you're able to see uh, uh, how you should develop your application so that we make them WCAG compliant, mm -hmm. right? Um, in terms of UI5, I would like Morton to take us on a joyride to what, yeah. what are we uh, delivering with the XP22, what kind of capabilities. So, Martin, could you could you show us? I think I'm going to turn on my PC and we'll show you some live demos of this. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I'm going to start by putting on my glasses because I'm getting a little bit too old for these guys. And what you see here is the uh, XP22 SAP portal uh, cockpit. Sorry, the cockpit. And it's uh, now based on UF5 108. 1, 108. Mm -hmm. And what that gives us is uh, two new themes, the horizon and the horizon dark. Called horizon morning and horizon evening, what we say, light and dark. And in the cockpit, it uh, it's, can be bright and light, and it has this Neptune background. And uh, it will, of course, also permeate it down to the app designer. It follows the same color scheme all over the place. But as we know, uh, Neptune developers and the SAP developers in special, they like to have a color in their cockpit in there because they have to have a development system, a test system and a production system. The production is maybe red and the quality is green and mm -hmm. in my case, uh, development is blue. So what I would start to do is I would start to make my tab blue because uh, then I know that now this group is now blue, but you see, oh, these colors, they don't really match. So what we've added is that we've opted the, uh, the color manipulation in the cockpit quite a bit. So now you can choose between the same colors that you have in your Chrome browser, like Edge and Firefox. So if you change to, to, change to blue. It's it, very blue. It's very blue. It permeates all the way down to everything in your cockpit. And you can even say, I want to use this selected branding. And then, poof, it pops up also in your app designer right away because we have this browser detection of this event driven architecture that listens to whatever we're doing. So all your tabs in the same system will get the same color. You see here, I have my, my template system where it's green. So now the uh, browser tab will then uh, follow the colors of the cockpit. And uh, I can see there as well that you have marketplace and app builder, you have them embedded in there. Yeah. So if you click on app builder, what does it do? It will take you to an, uh, an external site. It will open up, of course, Neptune DXP portal and yeah. where you can then consume it and the marketplace. The marketplace will then be consumed directly inside with the colors of of the uh, of this system you run. Exactly. So even the, the marketplace is permeated by the colors of your system selection. So that's really cool. Another uh, advantage of running embedded, right? Yeah. So let's say you don't want the, you would say, ah, I want these colors to be a little bit more muted. You can turn down the whole setting of the, of the of your colors but we've also added of course support for light and dark mode so that um, in your settings you can choose between light and dark or you can choose system default and that's both for the cockpit and also for the launch pad so let's uh, switch it on and see if i can find my system settings now it's on light but if i switch my system settings in windows to dark it will then tell the browser that now we are dark and the browser will tell our applications that now we are dark and it will choose the dark theme. So everything doof, just turns dark immediately in every, of course, every tab you're in will be dark. And you see that the colors will match now the, the colors of the browser because that's more like light when you're in a, in a dark mode. This is very geeky. It's very geeky, <laughs> but... Uh, I think it's something that when you know when you're on your when you're on your phone and if you have a dark mode on your phone and you install an application, you don't need to go in and change your theme to dark. The phone phone will actually just detect. Okay, you have a dark mode in, enabled. Do I have a dark theme mm -hmm. in my launchpad? Yes, and just show that. So we recommend now that you in your launchpad have two themes: a light and a dark mode. Just two, and then the user never has to change it. Just always choose the system default. But for this purpose, we're going to go back to light because that's easier on your eyes in the video. So that was the uh, that was the part about the theme detection and the system colors in the mm -hmm. app designer and in the cockpit. 
So now if you go to the uh, launchpad, if you focus on uh, end users and we think of what can they uh, bring, we have increased a lot on the uh, capabilities for in increasing productivity for the end user. What does that mean is the launchpad can be manipulated, can be uh, personalized by the end user. By the end user by whatever they want, without jeopardizing anything in terms of roles and authorization. So uh, if you show us what are yeah. those capabilities, and so, this is really cool. So of course, a launch pack starts out with the normal configuration. You as a developer or mm -hmm. a system administrator will configure the launch pack with tile groups and tiles. We like to call these tile groups screens, because yes. one tile group would then be one screen in a way. So we call them screens, and then we have the sections inside of each screen but it's technically tile groups and anyway tile groups and tile groups top level tile yeah. groups are called screens now. so you'll get the uh, default setup and layout and of course also in the launchpad you will have the option to now turn on light and dark mode so this is on system default and we are on light but we can of course turn on dark mode and everything just puff turns out dark and light and, and this is for uh, also accessibility features, high contrast okay. themes, you can also make it available. You can choose to go into the UFI theme designer and create a theme based on one of the high contrast themes, both light and dark. So you have just totally high contrast theme. So Neptune DXP supports all the accessibility uh, features you can, you can dream of. But let's start by, by figuring out what, what can the user do here. He said, ah, I have a lot of tiles, I have a lot of applications. Maybe they want to move them around a bit. So they long press or they right click mm -hmm. and then get a little menu saying, I want to edit my screen. And now you can start the move, removing things or you can actually start moving things around. So the end user can then customize the experience inside each screen. You can say, ah, I want this a little bit bigger. So it can actually reach out and make that tile bigger. You can choose to add a new application and you can then mm -hmm. add an application for everything you have done inside your launchpad. So all tile groups, all screens, basically you can have a catalog of everything, even the ones that you have removed, they'll be always here yeah. on the catalog. So you can always add them back. And you as a developer can add a hidden tile group that's not shown in the menu in a way in, the, in this navigation, but they will be available for searching and adding. And then you can create them like a minimalistic uh, experience at the beginning and people can add like uh, rare used applications if they want to yeah and you can create a link uh, an app from link so that uh, you want to have a an application maybe from your uh, from the app builder you want to showcase you can add directly into the launchpad maybe so you have you a salesforce store, document you that you want to showcase inside the launchpad but Let's see what... Uh, because that adds it as a tile, right? Let's add it as a tile. But I want to showcase that from inside one of our applications. Yeah. Can we do that? We can do that. Let's say you want to see... Uh, let's go back to this. Uh, I have a work order. So I have an application. This is then full of work orders. And whenever I click on one of these, I have added inside my application. I have set to, uh, to the launchpad, whenever a document is opened, I want to add that to the recently used features. And you see here we have a new search bar in the uh, launchpad. It's similar to what we have in the cockpit. You have your applications, recently used, and you have your favorites. And re these recently used is what you can create. It's not just a recently used application, it's documents that you Open, uh, open. That they didn't. It just opens. End user opens. So this is this is a, there is available a code snippet, right? Yeah. That's you can just add this to your application. And can you show us? I want to show you. So inside your application, you have of course your scripts where you have your init thing where you do your handle navigation on init and on before display. And then we have a new little uh, feature you create. So whenever you want to uh, add this document to the launchpad, you just say sub in artifact create and you add this artifact with the mm -hmm. uh, information from your application. So you have an ID, of course, you have to be able to identify it. You have a parent, and the parent will then be the... Application? The grouping of this. Oh, so you have messenger and mm -hmm. then you have work orders. So you can say, I want to have my grouping as the way I want them. 
and you have your title and your text and this is then uh, a semantic tile so it's using semantic navigation so whenever you click on the whenever you click on the uh, on the link you will see in the top part that when i click one of these on the around it will then change the url with uh, start params so that when i click here it will go directly into the application and open up the document so let's take one of the documents i have from from down here, from the work orders, it will go in here. And this one is actually created from before we have this new, this new uh, split uh, work order. It was okay. created from another application and it told me to open it as a pop-up. So you can have an app cache load doing in here and say, I want to add this as a, as a dialog. So we say, I want to take this browser pack and when I click and I want to, when I said open this water pipe broken, it will then immediately pop up to the top. At the latest, so it's uh, time, yeah. time sensitive. So let's, let's take some, I want to click now this broken, broken power pack, pack and then I want to go close it down and see how it works. So, so the next time I open pack. my launch pad, I'll have that. Shoop. It pop in here, now it's the pop up. But this one will then open the, oh, sorry. That's fine. It's a demo bug. It's a, uh... we'll cut it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or not. Let's uh, let's edit this out. Should I uh... continue? Continue. Continue. Go. Yeah. Okay. But but can I add it as a tile as well? Yeah. Right? So the recently used uh, application is just one of the new features we can do. We can also say from inside your your applications that you can say, I want to have this these details. I want to let the user add this as an application as a tile in my launchpad. So whenever you see your your kind of static uh, launchpad tile groups here, you maybe want to uh, enable the user to actually add this one of, add one of these as a tile. So we've enabled uh, again encoding that whenever you have an application you can register for this event. Mm -hmm. So it's called an app variant. And we of course have uh, we have tile snippets for this, code snippets for this. So in your right click in your code area, you have then the event set, I want to add an app variant. And when you do that, you get a long, long, long script explaining you exactly what to do. And here you have the options to actually let the end user create their own tile with the information they want. But of course, based on your input. So you can tailor it exactly how you mm -hmm. want it. So you can say which input field should be available for the end user to input in. And then when the user says, I want to save this tile, then you can take over and save that tile with the information that you want exactly what should be in it. Could we put by any chance this directly on the marketplace and uh, make it accessible for everyone with an example app? We could, yeah, right? We could do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll do that. So that you can download that application and all these ex examples. examples will be in it with data and everything. But let's see how we did it with this. So. Whenever the application is opened uh, and you have this event registering, the launchpad will then uh, detect that you have this app variant enabled. And in your menu, you will have this say app variant to my screen. So you don't have to add the app, the, 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 the code directly into the, the app. The launchpad will know. No, the launchpad will know that here, have, so you don't have to interrupt your, your UI with this button saying add this variant. So when you click here, it goes into your code. And let's see what it did here. You see, you have a title, you have a messenger, and you have a checkbox. And you even have data, right? You even have data. So inside your, uh, it's a kind of two promises. So you need to kind of implement promises here. And uh, but all the code snippets will guide you through it, so you don't need to know anything about promises to do this. So the first thing you need to do is that the first promise is then resolved by saying, "I want to have data in this pop-up." And actually, I want to go back to the server and fetch a list of all my messengers. And when I'm done with that, you see here that I have a, it's searching all here, it's pushing the, all the data to one application and it resolves it and says, I have these input fields. This is then, this uh, object will then be the input to the, to the promise and says, it has the input fields. I have a title, I have a, I have a label for the messenger and exactly these three, mm -hmm. these three fields, are the one we see in the screen. And you can even populate these fields with data. So here I have said this is select. So add this select uh, box with these mm -hmm. values 
and set the default key to this, uh, this uh, employee number. So that when you go in, of course, you will have the, you have the, uh, the content, the content from the screen you are at the moment, of course. So yep, Charlie is then added. You can say, Mr. Charlie, my man. And when you save to the screen, it will then go further down. You have your unsave mm -hmm. event, and then you'll get the data back from this save button click. And then you can do whatever you want. You say, I want to have a tile with this information. And in this uh, unsave back, uh, callback, you can add 50 or so different kind of options to create exactly the tile you wanted. You can create a dynamic tile, you can create a static tile, you can do whatever you want. Basically, you can add an, a tile that is the same from the tile configuration in the okay, cockpit. How does it look like? Okay, let's see. So you click this one. Mm -hmm. Mr. Charlie is, will just be save. Okay. Will just be a static tile on your uh, on your launch pad. But see. Even with the picture. Even with the picture, because in my configuration, I said, let's have a. Because these. Can I add a new one? Can you add a new one? Yeah, I can add a new one. So let's see. Let's click Mr. Charlie and say we have Susan instead of this. I do the same thing. Save app variant. Uh, Miss Susan. Save to my screen. For success. And now you have it on your screen. Oh, that's cool. Really, really nice. But and this is only valid for this user, right? But, this is only this user. But if this user goes to his mobile or her mobile device, uh, to their mobile device, they'll be able to, on the same launchpad, they'll be able to see the types. Uh, yeah, they would. But you, you should think that. But we know that end users, they access the mm -hmm. launchpad from both the desktop clients and from your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And they might not want the same experience. These two platforms on the mobile phone, they might want to have small tiles, smaller uh, access areas because they have a small screen. And they would, might want to hide something on the, on the phone that they want to see on the desktop. Mm -hmm. So we detect the ID of the device. So we detect the screen size, we detect if it's a mobile, if it's touch, touch enabled, and we try to Mm. to store that device profile and then each configuration, each end user configuration is stored, will be stored per device type. Uh -huh. Okay, so if I go to a different desktop. You have a new experience, but the next, this desktop will be the same. The same. Yes. If yes. I, and if I do, if I personalize, let's say, that now I go to the same launchpad on my mobile client, I personalize it there. If I lose my mobile client or open it in a different device, yes. I'll get the exact same experience. Yes. That's the so the experience is in a way, memorized by user and by device type. Yes, like a device profile. Okay, understood. So what oh, I was nice. about to say was that you, of course, can create these uh, tiles on your on, on the end user screens in a vast variety of ways. So one way was to have a pop up with the all, all mm -hmm. the fields, but you can also just do it do it in code. I say I know exactly what this tile should look like, so let me just do it in code. So you could say. So you have another code snippet, right? Another, another little code snippet that will say, uh, just create this app variant with these variables. Poof, poof, fast and easy. So that's mm -hmm. a code snippet as well. So how that would look like is that in your application, somewhere you will have- You can have a button. A button that. saying that, do this. And then you have a success message saying, now I've added this. And this is then a completely different uh, tile than the other ones. So <laughs> what? Well, it's the same application, but now I've added a lot of I've more added, data to it. More data to it. So, yeah, but to, of course, we can resize this one. Yeah, because that was a little bit too big. It's a, the type type of settings is so that it's a little bit small. So now the end user, ah, I just want to make it bigger. Simple, and they will remind uh, remember this. Yeah, really good. One other thing, stuff, right? You can add your things to the favorites, mm -hmm. and the favorites will then now be enabled uh, globally. Mm -hmm. And then, if you enable favorites or recently used on your screen, on the tile groups, you will have a little widget. Mm -hmm. Instead of having each and every tile popping up as favorites, they will now be added to a widget. Also. So we have automatic widgets coming from, and how to add them, right? If You'll you do that edit, uh, edit screen, when it? you're in the edit screen here. Yeah, you can either do that from, from each and every tile, or you can actually also go to the to the menu and edit the screen from here. And if you go here and click here, you can say, I want to have my favorites. Where are they? Just add to screen. And here are your favorites. Okay. And that I can also add my latest usage ones. We yeah. have a different widget there. Yeah, correct. Okay, now I'm on a device that, of course, not 
you have in order to resize your stuff, you of course need to be out of your <laughs> the wiggly mode. Wiggly mode. <laughs> so I want to resize this, and maybe I want to put it wide, wide. And you can say I want a compact mode, so a little bit smaller. But whatever you want, you can have your favorites as a widget. Mm -hmm. And these new tiles could maybe say, ah, I want to, I want to group them somewhere, some, somewhere different. So while we're at this uh, edit screen thing, I can actually add a new screen. So okay, so this will add to the very top a new screen where you can then add your own uh, categories and uh, you can move stuff there, create your own personalized experience. So I just add a new screen and immediately I'm taken to that screen and I can start adding stuff here. So we could actually search for those, uh, for that, that just that created. One. Yeah. Actually now I get, to, because now it takes that you have an app variant, so actually I have to create it from that. Because the application says that whenever you do this, you need to have create an application move. You have this, but I can also move it here, right? If I yes. go, if I now go on the um, to where I had it, I can right click there, and and on on the, the mobile device, you press down. Yeah, deep press, this is mobile. Right? This is mobile friendly. So whenever you long press on the mobile client, like a long touch, it detects your touch enabled, and then it's a long press. So if you move it now to my stuff, off it's here. It's there. Amazing. And you can then move all your... Very good. Um, so what else do we have? So we showed, we showed the re quick recap, we showed you the personalization framework on the, uh, on the launch pad. Uh, we spoke about the uh, app variants that we can create. Recently uh, used. Recently used, add to favorites, the widgets that you have now. What else? Your themes we have. Your themes and conversion. And we've done some stuff in the back end as well. Now you can actually use multi models in the SAP world. And that enables a whole new set of functionality because now we can start to add those complex UF5 components into the app designer. We mm -hmm. haven't done a whole lot of it, but the flow node is there at the moment. But we're going to have Gantt charts and we're going to have a lot of organizational charts that you can have multi models support for all those things. I just want to show you how, how cool it is because, of course, we started using multi models ourselves right away. So, the launchpad itself has the favorites and recently used uh, items. It's now a, a, a multi model. And why are we showing the uh, ACP GUI uh, it, uh, the app designer? Because the uh, computation you know, of these bindings is uh, pretty complex. So, it's done in ARPAP and going back and forth between the web app designer and the back end just takes too long at the moment. So we have to come up with another way of, of building those bindings because we help you a lot. It's not possible to do anything wrong anymore because the whole binding concept has been improved so that will guide you a lot more, mm -hmm. both in the backend and in the frontend designer. So you just bind your uh, multi-model to, uh, to a normal binding. This is then a always an object, of course, not a table, because a multi-model will always start with a structure and then in that structure, you will be able to have Nested. Deep nested structures inside the motor model. And this is then just fetched with a with a with an AJAX call. Mm -hmm. You get that exactly the same way as normal, you get the data back and we'll then extract that into your motor model and you have it to be able to be used all over your uh, applications. And so then each and every place where you use it, you will instead of the model source say you have a model path, and that path will then be going down to where that is used. And then it, this is then translated to a path that is totally compliant with UA5 uh, language. And this is also available already for since the beginning on, on the ACP, on the Neptune uh, DXP Open Edition. Yeah. And this is now downport to the ACP edition. Uh, one, one thing that I wanted to, to show us afterwards, if you can show us the aggregations on the, uh, on the web app designer. Yes, I'm not sure what you mean. But... You, you have them active? So if you try to drag and drop a component, ah, that those ones. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you meant. So you're in the app designer. You will go say, I want to use these uh, aggregation-based object placement. I'm going to do that. And you say, let's say I want to add this bar, for instance. Oh, where can I add this? I can add these to many different places, but it will actually fit not in this here, but it will fit in the page. So we can add it here, and of course, you still get the. Same things as all, all this. For this. And if you say I want to add some content to it, 
only in there allows you to... Only a few places can have content. So this, this is also valid for uh, between Open Edition and ACP Edition. You're going to see the same experience. So less mistakes, less risk, and, and basically better guided um, to the uh, developer. I think that is it. That's a wanted to show. So um, I have one bonus thing. A bonus feature. Bonus feature. A bonus feature. So, you know, in the, in the past, you always had, you had two levels of navigation. You mm -hmm. have tire groups and tire groups in tire groups. That's a stupid concept. It should be screens and sections. But now we've added support for uh, multiple levels of, of nested structure. So now you can actually structure and nest your menus as far as you want. We detect recursive uh, this because if you add a tire group in a tire group and add it to yourself you will have an endless loop so it will stop whenever we take that oh, oh, there is a recursive menu so the way you do this is that you have a tile that opens a tile group and in that tile group you have another tile that opens another tile group pretty easy we could spend here all day and we would love to but we need to wrap it up yeah um we will uh, uh, for sure uh, also want to highlight one thing is that the uh, personalization framework you saw here presented is available with the XP22 LTS on the ACP edition. Open edition will be soon updated through the marketplace. And you are able to do the same user experience for your end users exactly the same way, both on the ACP edition and open edition. Having that said, we'll leave the session open for a few minutes more so you can add your questions and as always, we'll be answering them on the community. Please stay tuned. Have fun. Thank you so much. And uh, keep Neptuning. Keep Neptuning <laughs> and thank you for today. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.